All right, good morning guys. I just want to take a moment and make a short video on an issue that we have been dealing with and I've seen it before, but it's very subtle in this car. And so maybe I thought I could help somebody help save some time. And I'm going to show you two different ways to look at it. Um, the topic that we're going to be discussing is converter slippage and noticing when it's really becoming a problem. I mean, you can run numbers all day, but up until about five or 6% of converter it's not really slipping enough to cause a problem. Um, when you get around 10%, it's really starting to hurt, you know, um, because if you're making a thousand horsepower, you're losing a hundred of it through the converter uh, and a hundred horsepower at the level that we race at is, you know, uh, a 10th, 10th and a half. So that's a, that's a decent amount. Uh, so <clears throat> what we're going to look at right here is one RPM drop at the shift and how it rolls over when the converter couples. And then we're also gonna look at fuel flow rate so that we can tell how much the engine, how much power the engine's making. Um, so that way we can kind of judge by the weight of the car how fast it really should be going. So <clears throat> right here we're gonna look. Um, and one of the first things you'll notice with a converter that's too loose um, is that when he releases the trans brake, this thing goes straight up, which is good to a certain extent, but somewhere right around here for this car, this thing should roll over and actually dip just a touch. That's what we call converter coupling. And it'll run up and it'll flash the converter real hard, and then it'll roll over and come back down just a touch, and then it'll flatten out. And once it gets coupled up, you'll see the engine just start to go up on a dead slant. Um, but that doesn't happen in this car until about two and a quarter seconds into the run. And what happens is it runs up and it flashes and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And then there's a little dip right there and then it starts its way back up after the converter's coupled. This thing should be happening way back here. It shouldn't wait to happen out here. Um, so that's kind of one of the first signs that this converter is having problems holding on to the motor um, once everything is started. Uh, so the second place we're going to look at for this is the shift. Now the shift on this converter actually looks pretty good, which lets me know that it has a hard time getting coupled. But once it's coupled at this boost level, which is only about 13 pounds of boost, at this boost level, once it's coupled, it's, it's probably doing its job pretty well. Um, the driver shifted it at 6,900 and it drags it down to 6,400. So there's 500 RPMs worth of drop in the shift. And everything looks pretty good after that. Uh, right here, the driver pedaled the car a little bit. So there's a, there's a blip in the map right there, but we're not gonna pay any attention to that. Up until that point, it's at 100% throttle. So 13 PSI, it runs out, finally couples. Um, at almost two and a half seconds into the run, and then there's 500 RPM shift worth of drop, or 500 drop, 500 RPM drop at the shift. So, um, for me, if if we were going to run this car at 13 psi all the time, this this would be an almost ideal converter. Um, everything looks pretty good for this run. However, what I'm about to do is I'm about to overlay a I'm about to overlay a, another run, so that way we can tell exactly what's happening here. Um, oh yeah, the, the second thing I wanted to mention, if you look right here to fuel flow, we are running um, the equivalent of E85. We're actually using VP Racing Fuels C85. But according to base specific fuel consumption, if we wanted to look right here and just multiply that, um, we, we run everything a little on the fat side, so I generally multiply on E85 by one. So technically we should be making around a thousand crank horsepower, take out 15% um, for drivetrain loss, not counting a converter that's too loose, and you end up with around, you know, uh, 850 horsepower at the wheels, which would be pretty, consecutive pretty dead on with what this car wants to run um, at the weight that it's at it's pretty heavy so let's go over here and open up another comparison file and kind of overlay these things and check it out um, and here is a 
25 PSI run. And what we notice right off the bat is instead of this thing rolling over and coupling up right there, I'm not sure what exactly is going on in the converter, but you can see obviously that we back the power up just a little bit and we get the power in a little early. And when we do, man, that thing starts to roll over right here and then it starts to make some power and it just blows the converter slam out of the water. Just rah, go straight to 7,300. Um, as you can see right there, it goes straight to 7,300 and it never leaves. When it runs down here to the shift and he shifts this thing, got 7,300 because that's where it's stuck at. At the drop, it drops to 7,100 basically. There's 200 RPM worth of drop and it only lasts about a tenth of a second, maybe a little less than that, and it's right back up to 72, 73. So it never holds on to the motor right here. There's a blip. Um, and I think that's probably just getting all the drivetrain stuff up to speed and then bam right back to 7300 um, And that's what he finishes the pass out at So if you're ever looking at this and you don't see a converter roll over dip for a second and then start a almost direct straight like this is to the shift point and then you get a good swag in it like this at the shift and then it holds down and right back up at this same kind of ramp. If you see anything that looks, you know, just where it spikes up, sticks at a really high RPM for some odd reason, the car doesn't go much faster, and then there's no drop at the shift at all hardly, then we know specifically that we're having a converter issue. Um, and we can also tell that we're having a converter issue because of how much pound per hour the of fuel the engine is consuming or wants. Um, as you can see right here, 13 pound pass, it uh, consumed around a thousand pounds per hour, which on C85 will almost convert directly to a thousand horsepower to crank. And then at uh, 25 pounds of boost, it, uh, or 24 pounds of boost, it converts over to uh, about 1300 crank horsepower. So we made another 300 horsepower at the crank um, with just 10 more pounds of boost. However, uh, it never translated to the time slip. This run actually only went a tenth of a second faster than this run. And in all honesty, it should have went three or four tenths of a second faster. Um, so we knew something was wrong right off the bat when we got the time slip, but I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that the engine's actually making more power, which it was significantly more. And then I wanted to look and see what was happening with the converter. And it's obviously, apparently the converter, it's just too loose. So we've sent a converter and we've had it tightened up and we've got it back in now. We're gonna do some more testing next week, but I just wanted to give everybody a kind of an idea of what to look for as far as horsepower. If you know the motor's making more power, the car should be faster. And then comparing it to um, a converter that apparently by the RPMs looks too loose. Um, when we get a really good data log uh, for a converter that works, then I'll make a video about that too. And I have some more, I just don't have them labeled. So I didn't want to just spend 10 minutes looking through them and and uh, get you guys completely lost in this. But anyway, if you got a loose converter, uh, start looking at that and how much power the motor makes. And if everything's not working correctly, then, uh, then something's wrong. All right, guys. Thanks. I'm Rob at Rob's Rod Shop. Y'all have a great day.